Okay, I just finished off a stream, um, kind of a very short one, giving an update about um, everything I was doing and talked a little bit on the uh, Der Spiegel article that went out on um, Xinjiang, talking about the surveillance state that that's turned into and just the absolute dumpster fire that, um, you know, is the, the Western province in China. It uh, was very disorganized. My cat was running around pretty much the entire podcast, so I wanted to go ahead and re-record it. Um, not necessarily in full form, but to put it up on YouTube and kind of have a uh, you know much more or slightly more professional version of it up on YouTube. So that's what this is going to function as. It's going to be a little update, talk a little bit about Xinjiang in a little bit more of a organized fashion, um, and then talk a little bit about some weird coup kind of rumor that went around the China circles. Um, so yeah, as a, uh, to kind of form as an update, I'm going to be going to Black Hat next week. So I will be traveling, which means I will be either more or less likely on, uh, or more or less active on social media than I was before. Um, so definitely look for me at Black Hat if you're going. Send me a message on Twitter um, and uh, let me know where you're going to be and when. Um, hopefully I'll be able to meet up with as much, you know, of the people that I talk to, you know, often as I can, but, uh, you know, it's going to be a busy week as is with all of the talks and the after parties and all of that fun stuff that I'll be going to. So definitely be looking for that. But a little bit before that on Sunday at about two o'clock central time, I will be doing a uh, podcast with the guys at sec juice. Um, I will be talking to, um, Jonathan Nichols and, um, one guy who is a self-reported black hat which seems like it's going to be fun, and one other person on the hacking back subject, something that I've talked to and about, you know, talked to people about at length, um, kind of a controversial and contentious subject. Um, so I'll be uh, kind of preparing my thoughts and my opinions on that in uh, the days to come. But definitely check that out. It's going to be live streamed on um, Sec Juice's channel, which uh, I think I'll probably remember to tag that in the description. Um, be sure to look for that because it's going to be a really interesting discussion. Hopefully I'll have my, uh, my thoughts kind of, or, or, and my research kind of fleshed out, um, beforehand. So, um, you know, that'll be Sunday at two o'clock. I've also been on a, uh, podcast I recorded on Sunday. Um, I, it, it was not live, um, so you didn't miss anything yet. It's going to be put up on YouTube, hopefully within, you know, the next week or so. It's with uh, a couple of guys. I'm not allowed to talk about it too much, but it's with a couple of guys that I've actually been watching um, for a couple of years now. I'm a huge fan of their content. So it'll be up on YouTube here soon. They also are on iTunes, Spotify, and a couple of other platforms. So I'm really looking forward to that um, episode being released. Um, you know, I really had a blast talking to them, and I, I wish I could talk about it more, but you know, I'll, I'll be uploading or, or updating social media as I find out more information about that. Um, so Black Hat, the Sunday Sec Juice um, podcast. I'm going to be doing another podcast on Wednesday, the 1st of August. Um, so that'll be tomorrow uh, when, I, when I record this. So um, you know, I'll be talking about the Xinjiang stuff in a little bit more detail. Um, and hopefully I'll have a guest on. But it's going to be a little bit more organized. Tonight was just kind of an update. Um, I wanted to put something out and just kind of update all of my followers and stuff like that about what I was up to and um, what to look for in the, the coming weeks. Um, but as for the Xinjiang article, I will, uh, I'll post a link in the description to the uh, Der Spiegel article that um, detailed just the absolutely Orwellian surveillance state that, sur that Xinjiang has become. Um, Xinjiang is a western province in China that uh, is known for having a Muslim majority um, which is very rare for anywhere in China to have any kind of religious you know majority but um, you know they, they've kind of they're you know right next to the Middle East and have you know been known to have you know a pretty severe extremist problem um, in years past um, that's where you've probably heard of the the knife attacks and you know things like that but um, now they've turned into an absolute dystopian nightmare of a different form um, they're now a, uh, you know, just abysmal surveillance state um, with, you know, purported dozens of cameras over every, you know, city block. Um, basically, neighbors are being paid and encouraged and informed that they will, in fact, inform on their neighbors. Um, 
and, and it's just kind of turned into everything that we've been talking about, um, you know, in the years past as being a hypothetical. And unfortunately for the people in Xinjiang, it's not a hypothetical. It's a very real thing. And, um, you know, it, it, Der Spiegel's article talked about a lot of the stuff that I knew was already going on, but kind of detailed it in an especially, um, you know, just kind of abysmal and dystopian way. Just kind of talked about the the surveillance measures that were put on their you know journalist team, um, the people who they interviewed being you know snatched off and interrogated, the different um, you know like the the uh, re-education camps is what they call them. Essentially, you you, you get disappeared. Um, nobody knows where you went. Basically, nobody's allowed to talk about you anymore. You're you're considered just one of the forgotten ones, and you go off to a patriotic re-education camp where you learn how to be a, a good Chinese citizen, um, how to uh, you know love your country the right way and not talk about the things that you talked about before and how incredible Chinese culture is. Um, so that that's something that we've talked about in books. It's something that we've talked about um, as a hypothetical and as a you know a scary nightmare situation. Um, but it's not that anymore. It's a, it's a very real situation for those in Xinjiang, for those in China um, at large. It's becoming a, you know, a very real kind of situation. And um, this kind of poses the question, what are we supposed to do about it as a Western democracy? Um, and what are we as you know, the rest of the world outside of China supposed to do about it? Well, it's difficult because um, you, know, you, you, you can't just kind of point the finger at China and just kind of shame on them. Um, because that they weren't in a situation to fight it. That's that's the problem. They weren't in a situation to talk out against it. They weren't in a situation where um, they could really combat it in a you know in a legal way at least, because they had all of that right taken away from them. Um, you know they weren't allowed to talk about it on social media, or it would be censored and they'd be snatched up and sent off to camp anyways. Um, and they weren't allowed to you know kind of come together as any kind of you know dissident group because any kind of grouping that isn't you know pro-china is considered an enemy of the state um so what are we supposed to do about it we're supposed to look out for the legal precedent that leads to something like this um you know i'm not talking about you know abolish ice or any of the other um things that are being talked about you know in social media i'm talking about we, we need to watch for actual legal precedent that sets up a surveillance state like you saw or like you see now in china um, you can't uh, you can't assume that it's you know that nightmare scenario of the boogeyman hiding under your bed anymore. It's not that's not what it is anymore. Um, you know now it's a very real thing, and there are going to be authoritarian regimes learning from the China example and you know basically perfecting the art of surveilling and censoring citizens and re-educating citizens into you know mind-controlled zombies. Uh, you know, I don't mean this to be a, you know, you should be hiding from all of the, you know, feds around the corner. That's that the U.S. is far from that. But there's a tipping point where after you're past that tipping point, there's no really going back, not in a, a, a legal, civilized, you know, fashion. So, you know, in China, they, they're well past that tipping point. Now, there's there's very little, you know kind of way that they can fight it now because they've already been constrained so far you know you can fight the handcuffs before they're locked in but once they're locked in and tight it's very difficult so we need to be watching for that kind of precedent to be set in other western democracies in other western democracies or in other areas where they haven't reached that level yet and you know as for the places that are you know past that tipping point like china we need to support their activists we need to talk more about this issue um, and we need to stop pretending like it's a hypothetical because it's not a hypothetical anymore. This is something that's really going on. So, you know, we need to treat this as a real situation. We need to talk about it like their Spiegel is. Um, be very open and um, very specific about the examples of censorship in China. Um, you know, we need to support Amnesty Inter International, who's been in the news for all of the wrong reasons today. Um, we need to support the activists who are talking about this and we need to talk about it ourselves. You know, this isn't like an example that needs to be lost. You know, if, the, I, if I had, you know, the ability, I would put this Der Spiegel article in everybody else's home and say, you have to read this. 
you know, this is something that you need to be aware of because this isn't something that you're reading in a, you know, George Orwell book anymore. This is something that's really going on in a really real place. And, you know, if you're willing to be loud about, you know, a billion different other issues, why not be loud about this? You know, this is one of the most dystopian, horrible things to happen to a group of people, you know, in terms of surveillance and censorship in a long, long time. Um, you know, if you thought the NSA revelations were bad, you know, those were all that's metadata collection. These people are being followed on the street, being stolen and, you know, black banned away to re-education camps. Like, I, I, don't, I don't understand why, you know, the Snowden revelations were such a huge deal. But, you know, you won't talk about Xinjiang. You won't talk about, you know, a couple dozen surveillance cameras on every city block. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. But I won't spend too much more time on that. I do kind of want to talk about the weird coup rumor that went around the China circles. Um, it was talked about on China Uncensored, and I'll put a, uh, a link to that video. It was, it, it was really weird because there were just all of a sudden reports of gunfire in Beijing. Um, and essentially the, the rumor that went around was that uh, Hu Jintao and Jiang Zemin launched a very, very failed assassination or coup attempt against Xi Jinping, which... I was immediately kind of, I, I didn't really know how to feel about that because, you know, armed coup attempts in China just doesn't seem like the China way. Um, you know, and Jiang and Hu kind of, I mean, I'm sure they've got the power to pull something like that off, but it just doesn't really seem like their style. So I was immediately just kind of dubious about that. I don't know what the story ended up actually being, but, you know, basically it was all dispelled as uh, rumors. It, it was just very very strange rumor that went around but kind of wanted to mention that um in passing um but uh you know i went on a weird zt rant on stream i didn't really mean to but i got angry about that again i've been angry about it since you know the news first broke that we were even thinking about lifting the ban but um i won't do that to youtube because i just have a feeling that's just going to go off the rails as soon as it starts but um i'm hoping this kind of form says a uh you know update kind of a very short chat I wish I could have uploaded the original stream, but it was just so disorganized that it just wasn't going to happen. But yeah, thank you guys for showing the uh, support that you have to the YouTube channel. Um, it's hopefully going to grow into something that's a little bit, you know, bigger than my Twitch following because I, I think it's a little bit more accessible um, and that, you know, you can access at any time. Um, but yeah, feel free to subscribe on YouTube, uh, follow me on Twitch, all of that fun stuff. I'm still very active on Twitter despite having quit. Um, a couple of weeks ago, but I'm still very active on Twitter, so uh, you know, keep up to date with that. I will be doing another stream tomorrow at about 7 o'clock um, Central Time, so uh, feel free to show up for that stream, ask questions, listen to me chat about stuff. Hopefully I'll have a guest on because it's a little bit boring when it's just me talking to a wall. Um, but yeah, you guys feel free to show up for that, and thanks for the support.